Dear friends, uh, good to be back again with you to a new program. I would call Can Apes Be Students? My partner today in this discussion is Mr. John Mackay, International Director for Creation Research Australia. Good to see you again, Mr. Mackay. My question is still the same. Can apes be students? So can we put a student or an ape to be a student in our children's class. Mm -hmm. Can you help me with this? Well, I was in one school in uh, the USA and the students' behavior had become so obnoxious that they actually had guards, I mean armed guards, in the hallways with batons, right? And I thought, students can be apes. Uh, there were no monkeys in that school, however because even the Battens wouldn't have enabled the apes to be students. And I'm, I'm serious when I say that because people with lots of money to spare have gotten research grants to try and teach apes and monkeys and gorillas and orangutans and all their hairy cousins, right? And the things they've <laughs> tried to teach them are things like speech. And you can follow their logic because if man evolved from some ape-like creature, if we've got a common ancestor with all the current ape family, if we can speak, then somehow it's something that we have developed. So therefore, we should be able to find a way to teach this to monkeys and apes and gorillas. And so they've tried to make the monkeys and the apes into students. Okay, we've succeeded in solving several things as a result. We know that if you give them peanuts and say, come on monkey, say please, it just goes, <laughs> right? And it does that for 10 years. But the interesting thing is, it not only never speaks, but it can think. And you can teach it to say yes please and no thank you on its fingers. So thinking is going on in there, communication is going on in there, but speech isn't. And of course the one thing they don't do is take their speech and write a speech dictionary <laughs> for apes and monkeys and gorillas so they can all have a, you know, a, 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 a discussion about the origin of man. They never even ponder where chimpanzees come along, let alone where man comes from. So, so far, no one's been able to turn apes into students. Do you remember that old illustration that, um, given long enough, monkeys typing on a typewriter would be able to eventually type Shakespeare, therefore, given long enough, molecules could self-organise into human beings. Remember that? Yep, yep. Well, that's finally been tested. Somebody, and this is hard to believe, right, in the UK actually got a government grant and they installed computer keyboards in a zoo, right, in England, and they kept a record of what the monkeys typed. And you can actually get this from the, from the website, right? And the funny thing is, not only did the apes and monkeys end up destroying the keyboards because they largely urinated on them, right, they had a a penchant desire to type only two or three letters. G, they love G's and S's, right? <laughs> and largely it would seem because that's where their bottom fitted on the computer <laughs> keyboards. As silly as it seems, we've now disproved the concept that given long enough, uneducated monkeys will finally somehow randomly type Shakespeare. Of course, this is little publicised because the corollary is, given long enough, molecules will never self-organise into something as complicated as the student in the high school. So, can students be apes? Can apes be students? Well, we can rule out the apes be students bits. But you and I live in a world where, due to the influence of Charles Darwin, the theory of evolution, the BBC, National Geographic, Reader's Digest, all of those popular magazines, plus most high school textbooks, the students are coming out behaving as if they were apes because they've been taught they are their nearest living cousins because we have a common monkey-like, ape-like ancestor two to three million years ago. Did I understand well that you just said that if we claim that we are apes, we're getting free computers? <laughs> <laughs> what that kind of no, the, the zookeepers got Good, the free so that, computers. That comes with a cage. That comes with a cage. The yes. viewers, don't don't try to do that. You're gonna get a free cage. <laughs> not gonna be happy with. <clears throat> Our previous programs were a bit more general. I would love to get more specific mm -hmm. on uh, certain subjects. My question was, can apes be students? You definitely said no. They cannot be students. Evolution, though, teaches that man is just an animal. Mm -hmm. Does this specifically affect a student's development into 
what society would want them to be. Well, you've been to a zoo? Yes, I did. Have you been to the monkey cage? Yes, I did. Okay, when you stand outside the monkey cage, you look in and there you see some thing, some creature with a hairy face and two eyes. In fact, yeah. it looks like you, that's the right. <laughs> That's what you look that at. That was long ago. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And some zoos actually have signs that say, visit your relatives in the zoo this weekend, right? And then when the young people go there, and if that's the mindset they've got, they see monkeys and chimps doing their thing, right? So that the one that's big enough, he gets all the girls, right? Mm -hmm. You can observe this happening. Yeah, yeah. And there's no sort of wedding chapel over here so you can have an official chimpanzee wedding, right? They just have sex anywhere they like. If she's in season, he's after her, whether she wants to or not. So if you teach the students that monkeys and apes and gorillas are our nearest cousins, then by implication, whether you intend to or not, you are teaching them that sexual behavior like the monkeys do is just an extension of our behavior or vice versa. So we shouldn't be surprised that if you have a, you know, a group of young men who grow up with that in their mind, that their relationship with women of the same species just degenerates, right? Because apes do it, monkeys do it, baboons do it. Why can't we? Why should we get married? Why should we, you know, just have sex with only one woman? Uh, monkeys do whatever they like. He does. If he's big enough, he gets all the women. So therefore, we shouldn't be surprised if we start to see young males particularly behaving in that because the monkey and the ape and the chimp have been set up as our role model without a shadow of a doubt. Um, in fact, I remember reading a paper oh, many years ago now um, in a f rather famous museum publication in which the author was trying to figure out why Americans, all right, and only someone in America would get money to do a research grant like this, why the average American marriage is lasting only three years. Now, you've seen the divorce statistics in the States? Uh, not exactly, but I know it's just it's, rampant. It's rampant, isn't it, right? Well, you get the impression from Hollywood, I mean, they go through husbands and wives and uh, girlfriends and boyfriends like they grow on trees. But in reality, <laughs> they, the, the historians know that 40 years ago it wasn't like this. If somebody got married, they stayed married. Now, the leaders of society, whether it's presidents or the peasants, right, they have this attitude that marriage is not permanent. In fact, it doesn't really matter. So they, their marriage structure is falling apart so much so that people like George Bush has tried to get special legislation to even define what a marriage is. It's just not in the concept of the people anymore. And so somebody had a research grant and they said, how will we find out the answer? And so what they did was they studied our nearest living relatives, according to the theory of evolution. So guess what do you think they studied? Apes. Apes, that's right. So they sat down and they did a study of apes. Now their logic is no different from the ancient Greeks and it's a correct logic and it's no different from Jesus Christ's logic because Jesus said in Matthew 19, he said, haven't you read it back in the beginning God made the male and female, therefore a man will take a wife. So his argument is where something comes from tells you what it's mean, what it means tells you what it's worth. That's how every one of us argues. But it matters therefore if you pick the wrong starting point. Okay, so the theory of evolution says we're related to the apes, let's study them. Now, do you know what they discovered? Their conclusion is very simple. We know why human being marriages last only about three years or so. That's the longest two gorillas can tolerate each other. <laughs> now, therefore, Mr. President, we recommend that divorce be an automatic inclusion in any marriage statement, and they're just being logical. But you see, the average person confuses logic with truth. And I mean scientists do it, yes. theologians do it, philosophers do it. Logic and truth are two different things. You, you've read Agatha Christie, haven't you? Yeah. Detective so, stories, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, you've watched Hollywood movies. Now, they're all logical. Well, most of them are, right? But when you watch those movies, Agatha Christie detective stories, she was a fabulous top seller all her life because the stories were 100% logical. None of them were true. Logic and truth are two different yes. things. So if you pick the wrong starting point, from then on you can be 100% logical. 
you'll just be wrong. Yeah. It's the starting point, not your logic. Yeah. So that's why it's important when we look at this issue, if students are going to behave properly in the future and have the right rules about tomorrow, they need to be taught the right beginning point because after that, their logic will flow automatically in the right direction. There's some birds that are just nesting with the same partner mm -hmm. each year. Yep. Well, we could take that as a model of, of a good family and so on. I wonder why scientists push whatever they, it fits their agenda of, it looks to me, to deliberately to destroy societies. Yeah, well, they do. Mm. I mean, if you come to Australia, we've got some spiders in which the female mates with the male and then she eats him. Now, the feminists love that example, right? And the, 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 the male chauvinist pigs, they love the horse because the stallion beats up any of the women, right, and he gets what he wants. <laughs> now, you could reach any conclusion based on that. Of course, you're not a horse. You're not even a goat, right? So it doesn't matter what the billy goat or the, or the nanny goat is doing. You're a human being. So the question is, what is the right role model for the human being? Yes. And again, that gets to you. In the beginning, God made them male and female, and that's the reason exactly. for marriage. Start anywhere else, and you'll have a wrong conclusion. But it brings up a point I made in a previous program, because you use scientists, and why aren't they looking at these other examples and said they're just picking what they want? In reality, the examples they're picking are related to the database they believe that they're allowed to have. Remember I mentioned about the Science Teachers yes. Association saying science includes in explanations without reference to God. So what you've got is here is a big box. This is the information we can use. We can study pigeons, we can study spiders, we can study apes and monkeys and gorillas. Here is the other box called God. We can't study that. Now, the fact is, when you have a look at this world, even if you're an ardent evolutionist and you want to be supposedly logical, you're trying to explain how creationists evolved. Right? So therefore, creationists are data and you're trying to explain where marriage came from. So marriage is data. And in the long run, you're trying to explain where religion came from. So all religion is data. But the trouble is, religion includes a knowledge of God. And that's already ruled out. So therefore, they're dishonest right from the start. So we shouldn't be surprised if you take a dishonest approach, you end up with a fallacious exactly. conclusion. Exactly. I am little Johnny, comes off the zoo, sees the sign, just visited the relatives, meets Mr. Mackay, Mr. Mackay is with a track, I'm a creationist, I'm a scientist, I'm giving answers, providing answers, differences between humans and apes, little Johnny is all confused, he tries to talk to his mother saying, <laughs> mommy doesn't understand, Mr. John is around, help mommy, mm -hmm. is there any difference between little Johnny and uh, little Billy the, the ape in the cage. Uh, she's just been told that we are just this little bit of different of uh, porcupines and apes mm -hmm. and whatever mm -hmm. sort of DNA yeah. mapping yeah. genome. Sort this out for me please. Well, of course, so, little you, mommy. We, we can go into technical details mm -hmm. in DNA but let's take mummy's helpful approach okay. first because Little Johnny doesn't know about DNA, Great. right? Mummy doesn't know too much Poor about DNA. This is why she's confused. Yes, that's right. But in reality, when you visit the chimp cage, you can see obviously a few very important differences. We visit them in the zoo, <laughs> they don't visit us at the zoo, right? So there's the first difference. And that is not we, even DNA. It's, it, it's, it's the consequence yes. of the DNA, right? Yeah. Though, however, so obviously, even if you said we're 98.4% the same as the chimpanzee, Obviously that 1.6% means we build zoos and they don't. We ask questions about chimps, they ask no questions about us. We have a school to learn about chimps. There's no school in the zoo for chimps, right? It just doesn't exist. In fact, if you have a closer look, you'll notice that they can hold on upside down to a branch holding on with their feet. Now, if you were to swing upside down in the trees, Romulus, holding a branch between your toes. I mean, look at the size of you. The tree would go crack and you'd hear, ah, and then splot. Um, you wouldn't do it a second time. Yeah, because now the, the splothing would be very... Well, no, not the splothing, but the problem is the fact they've actually got four hands. We call them feet, but they've actually got four thumbs. 
and thumbs are on hands and you and I have got two thumbs. We've got two feet and two hands. Now the difference this makes, an awful lot of things flow that mum can see and little Johnny could see if only they'd take the evolutionist glasses off. You see, if you've got four hands, you can't actually stand upright for very long. It may be very handy to be able to hold onto a tree branch and spring with your feet or with your, your, your hands, whatever, but in reality, certain things flow on which you can't do. Illustration, go outside this studio after we've finished Romulus, flip up on your hands and walk from here to Bucharest, right? You will soon find that hands are for holding, feet are for walking. Now, we haven't even got into cytosine, guanine, adenine, thymine and DNA yet. You don't need to. All of these are the expression of the differences between monks and apes and chimpanzees. Therefore, they walk on all fours because that's the only way you can do it if you've got four hands to spread the weight so you don't bust your hand. Now, as a result, think carefully. You and I, we stand upright and our head, our eyes are at right angles. But if a chimpanzee did that, he's walking on all fours, he can certainly see the ants between his legs. But he hits every tree that's in front of him, right? So you'd end up with even dumber chimpanzees as a result. So therefore, their head is swiveled forwards and it actually hangs off their, their backbone rather than sitting on it. So their eyes can see forward. Now, if you're going to hang your head off your backbone, the shape of your backbone will alter the balance. So if you have a look at a chimpanzee backbone, it's a nice, very profound S-shaped curve. Now, if little Johnny had a backbone like that, mum would whip him off to the doctor <laughs> real fast, right? And if he didn't have a tail and he didn't have four hands, <laughs> the doctor would be very worried. But if he was a chimp, that's normal, that's okay. Uh, so therefore, there's lots of simple things you can point out without going into the fact that it's only last year where they really, for the first time, actually studied chimpanzee chromosome number 22. Okay, point, all of those statements about 98.4% the same that have been made since 1990 were fallacious. Because when we studied chimpanzee chromosome number 22 and studied the nearest similar to one in human beings, have a guess how different they were. 80% different. different. That's how different, and that's the only chromosome we've really studied in detail. So if one of them is 80% different, I think we now know why they swing upside down in trees and we don't. And I think we now know why we have schools and they don't. The difference is actually incredible. Why didn't I know anything about it from National Geographic, Science Now, Science, um, the Time, Newsweek, not on the front page. I mean, I'm pretty well informed mm -hmm. of some things. Big Brother wasn't pleased with the 80% of That's difference. That's true. That's true. But isn't it true like you've had many dictators in the history of the world? Mm -hmm. And it's a track record of dictators that if anything ever sh crops up which contradicts anything they've said, do you, the ordinary person, ever hear about it? No. Do you read it as headlines in the newspapers? No. Mm -hmm. Well, in science, we have a dictator. It's called Darwinian world view, right? So if you believe in evolution, you have to believe that monkeys and apes and chimps and gorillas and orangutans and baboons and all the hairy cousins are related to us. So anything that contradicts that is not going to be headlines in the Times or the Bucharest Daily or any, it's just not going to hit the headlines because it's too embarrassing. A little bit of information sneaked out to folks like you and I about the little fossil people from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Would you just make a couple of comments on that? Well again, remember we've been talking about the fact that if you're wearing Charles Darwin's glasses, okay. everything you find has to fit somewhere in there, mm -hmm. right? And so any skull or bones you find, if it's even got the slightest resemblance to Romulus campan dead and stripped of all his flesh, right, uh, then you will see it showing up as one of our re relatives or an ancestor or a related to our ancestors. Now so far, the picture you've gotten from Indonesia is, ah, we found evidence that human beings, or at least relatives of human beings, had gone a lot further than we previously thought. Okay, point number one, this makes for a great new PhD. Point number two, that means a good new reputation. Point number three, it means page space in National Geographic. Point number four, it means grants. Okay, now that's the bottom line.
Um, however, if you actually check the original data that came out in Nature, even the reviewers in Nature are saying, but this has got a brain capacity of 300 cubic centimetres. Now that's, you know, half, less than half a carton, a litre carton of milk, right? Now, you're, I'm looking at somebody here who's got a brain space of anywhere between 1,200 and 1,500 cubic centimetres, which is significantly more. Ooh. So when you have a look at the chimpanzees today, their brain space is not much different from the brain space of these new skulls that have been found. And so far, the rest of the skeleton, and nobody has found a complete whole skeleton yet, the rest of the skeleton, the hip particularly, is much more like the chimpanzees. So if you've found a skull which has got a brain size of a chimpanzee and a hip like a chimpanzee, what might you theorize that we found? A chimp. Yeah, I, I think I'd go along with that. Mm. And until somebody finds the whole skull and the, the particularly the hands, they're just guessing. And that's probably the best you could say about these so-called little people. Now, we do have little people on the planet. You've heard of pygmies? Oh, yes, I did. Okay, the reason we've got pygmies, and as far as we can see, they actually come from the giant Zulus, you know, the, the, one of the yes, tallest races yeah, on the yeah, planet. Yeah. But the bottom line is they've got a clock. Every one of us has got a clock. Every human being's got a clock to stop you growing too tall. But if that clock breaks, which is what's happened in the pygmies, the growth hormone switches off when they're 10. So whatever height they've reached at 10 years of age, that's, that's the tallest it's going to be. But they don't have a brain size of a chimpanzee, right? They are ordinary human beings who just haven't physically matured past 10 years of age, even though they've mentally and spiritually matured past that. If I see a skull with brain capacity close to one of the monkeys, uh, I would say I just found a chimp skull. So in order to find out who I am, I should look for someone that I, I am like, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, who is man like? Okay, you'll find that man is not like chimpanzees. No, in because so he's not. many yes. ways, right? Even in our the nature, I mean, there's no chimps running programs discussing with each other the nature of yeah. chimpanzees, right? Mm -hmm. So we are profoundly different. There's no chimp churches. There's not the first Baptist church of chimp land, okay? <laughs> it just doesn't exist. They haven't had any theological splits lately. So they, it, it's just the, 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 the things that we call abstraction sometimes, like theology, mm -hmm. religion, society, mores, all of these things don't actually apply too well to chimpanzees. So if you're looking, if evolution can be proven false, and it's, it's just nonsense, you're not evolving, I'm not evolving, if we're doing anything, it's the other way, right? We're degenerating. So therefore you're looking at the biblical picture of creation which says man was made in God's image. So therefore you are meant to be like God. Now I'm not surprised that chimps aren't creative and we are. I mean, they can take sticks and poke it into holes to dig out ants. You and I take a stick and we get a knife and we sharpen it and then we turn it into metal and then we turn it into a space rocket, right? And we send the ants out to space to see how they survive, right? So we are creative compared to them. So if you're looking for evidence that man is made in the image, <coughs> excuse me, of a creator, we've got it. But the problem is your Bible says that that image has been defaced by sin and there's something wrong with all of us. And the good news, of course, is the Bible also says that this God came down to earth and we haven't long had Easter, have we? And that's what Easter is all about, the person of Jesus Christ coming to deal with the penalty of sin so that his image could be restored to us and we could get back what that very man Adam lost. Uh, unbelievable. Have you ever thought, if you are so brilliant at design, if you look so gorgeous, just look into the mirrors, not early in the morning, but a bit <laughs> later, <laughs> And not even late in the night when you're so tired, but just watch yourself, watch your children, the joy on their faces, and just let your imagination fly. How can, could our Creator be? I'm just amazed of, of the little bit that I can understand just watching people, mm -hmm. the marvels of creation. And <clears throat> just even though it, it's tinged by degeneration. Yes, yes, even had. so, yeah. just think of the perfection of the one behind all. Mr. Mackay, www.creationresearch.net. Have you anything in?
come in with this website? In fact, they can actually get a free whole list of the differences between men and monkeys and apes and gorillas. Free. It's free, right? We do our best uh, to supply that. And all they need to do is simply go to the website and ask for the free attachments, okay? And they'll just turn up at the end of their machine. And there's lots of other things there that aren't free, but they, they can investigate www. Uh, creationresearch.net. Every second week or so, uh, completely free, science-loaded, mm -hmm. biblically correct and informed uh, newsletter mm -hmm. on your desktop. Just go ahead and uh, click the at, evidence news button. Exactly, or ask that info at creationresearch.net, and you'll have every second week or so at your desktops one leisure. Dear friends, Mr. Mackay, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for uh, sharing the honor of talking with one another with you today. Have a very blessed day with the Lord Jesus and with one another. Thank you.